Greetings friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Armageddon, you heard of it. Is it imminent? Is it about to come? Well, I decided to do this particular message because this morning I saw an article and the sub-headline caught my attention. So let me read you the sub-headline. It was Armageddon. Will it come on Trump's watch? And basically this particular author says essentially because Russia and China don't want some more conflict or war with uh, the United States, and Donald Trump wants to be reelected in 2020, the speaker author says it's not going to happen now. That's basically this author's position. Now, this particular author didn't quote scripture, just gave uh, his own opinion. Now, is he right that Armageddon is not going to happen between now and uh, uh, 2020, or even during perhaps a second consecutive Donald Trump presidency? Well, the author didn't go into that part of it, but I'll answer that now. No, Armageddon, the gathering of Armageddon that's talked about in the Bible does not happen until certain other events happen, and those events cannot happen before the end of what would be a second Donald Trump presidency if they run consecutively. Why do I say that? Well, to learn about this, we should go to the Bible. We can read certain things about Armageddon and some things that precede it. If you've got your Bibles, you might want to follow along. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 16, and I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of wrath of God on the earth. So we're talking about the bowls of wrath of God, and we'll get into later when this happens. And various bowls are poured out. The first bowl has got to do with loathsome sores followed by the sea turning into blood. Then the water is turned to blood in the third bowl. Uh, people are scorched by high heat in the fourth bowl. The fifth bowl has uh, darkness and pain. But the sixth bowl is the one that we're going to be uh, referring to now because this is the one that the term Armageddon is specifically associated with in Scripture. So, in Revelation chapter 16, starting in verse 12, let me read what it says. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And they gathered them together in a place in Hebrew, called in Hebrew, Armageddon. There's a couple of things here. Notice also, this passage says we're supposed to watch. So watching events is something that Christians should be doing. Now the term Armageddon means a hill or mountain of Megiddo. Now, it's a place that I've been to, I've seen it, I've looked into the history, I've taken, taken pictures, but notice that a gathering is to take place there. Now, who's involved in this? Well, first I'd like to read something from a different translation. I want to read this from the Berean Literal Bible. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 again. And the sixth poured out his bowl upon the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way might be prepared of the kings of the rising of the sun. And that's literally what the Greek says, as opposed to kings from the east. But geographically, the area of the rising sun from, let's say, Jerusalem or somewhere in that part of the world, because that's, well, John was on the island called uh, Patmos when he saw this, so the sunrise would be east, so this is one of the reasons why I think we see translations of the kings of the east. But anyway, the kings of the sunrise, you're talking about areas in far, far east Asia, would be involved. And so we get some idea of some who's going to be involved. And this is going to be a huge amount of people who are involved here. And as far as the Asian side goes, we can go to Revelation chapter 9 and read a few things about this. Uh, Revelation chapter 9 I'm going to read uh, a few verses, starting in verse 13. 
Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. So we see a 200 million man army. And who could possibly feel such an army? Well, that would be forces from Asia, particularly nations such as uh, China and India. But also, I believe, there will be involvement from, from Russia, uh, Japan, uh, Korea, uh, etc. So it's not just limited to uh, one or two, two countries here. So we get an idea of some of the size of this gathering. It's going to be huge. We've got some idea of some of who's going to be involved. But when's it going to happen? This is one thing people have, have wanted to know. Now, in the article I was mentioning before, basically the author called Armageddon Global Conflict. And it actually had to do with the, the actual headline, had to do with global conflict. And global conflict will come, but the particular one associated with Armageddon doesn't happen for some period of time. You know, how do we know this? Well, we have to go to the scriptures to look for the answers. As I mentioned before, if you look at Revelation 16, you'll see that the six bowl is poured out after the first five bowls are poured out. Now, when does this happen? Well, this happens after the seventh seal is open, which you can read about in Revelation uh, 8, verses 1 to 6. And when that happens, the year-long day of the Lord, defined as a year-long in Isaiah 34, 8, begins. Okay, so some year-long date happens, but what happens before then? Well, before the seventh seal can be opened, in Revelation 6, 12, we see that the sixth seal is open. So the sixth seal has got to be open before the seventh seal. The seventh seal has got to be open before the bowls are poured out. And the first five bowls of wrath have to be poured out before the sixth can be poured out. And anyway, yes, the sixth seal is not open until after the fifth seal is open. And the fifth seal is uh, Revelation 6, 9. And the Great Tribulation begins uh, after the opening of the fifth seal. Now, the, between the opening of the fifth seal and the pouring of the sixth bowl is going to be a, a bit over three years. Now, how can we know that? Well, the total time of the Great Tribulation, the Day of the Lord, is three and a half years. It's referred to as 42 months in Revelation 11.2 and Revelation 13.5. I'm not going to go there. Now, this period of time is also called a time, times, and half a time in Daniel 7.25, Daniel 12.7, uh, and Revelation 12.14. So time, times, and half a time is also three and a half years. Now consider that the fifth seal has not been opened and the Great Tribulation has not began. Now you also need to realize that the Great Tribulation does, cannot start until a particular deal is made that we can read about in Daniel uh, chapter 9, verses 26 and 27. So let's go there for a moment. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end of it will be with a flood, and till the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Now, in that passage, you see a prince is supposed to come. Now, when does he come? He comes well after the temple of Jerusalem has been destroyed, and that happened in 70 AD. He comes from the people who destroyed that, which would have to do with the Roman Empire. But he's going to confirm some type of a covenant for one week. One week prophetically, is considered by most prophecy watchers to be seven years. So he's going to, this prince is going to confirm a seven-year deal, and he's going to break it in the middle of it. In the middle of it is three and a half years. And notice it says he's going to stop the sacrifices. And we can see this also in Daniel chapter 11, verse 31. So let's go ahead and read that. 
and forces shall be mustered by him, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortresses. Then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation. Now this him, the person called him in verse 31, he's the same person who was the prince in Daniel 9, 26, 27. But he's now the, considered the king of the north, as you can read in other parts of Daniel 11, such as Daniel 11, verse 40. He's also called uh, the, the beast of the sea in Revelation 13, 1 to 10. And his actions begin the great tribulation in Daniel 11, verse 39, which, and I know I'm just spouting off some scriptures here, is also called, I'm not just spouting off, I'm giving reference, spiritual references here, also called the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30, verse 7. But the events in Daniel 11.31 don't begin until three and a half years after this prince confirms the deal. And the deal has not yet been made. Even if the deal had been confirmed today, and it's not going to be, the earliest date for the gathering of Armageddon would be sometime late in 2025, which I think is too early. Because basically you have to have at three and a half years from the time the deal is made and hasn't been made, and then a little, a bit over three years for the uh, bowl to be poured out, uh, or in the seventh seal, the sixth bowl poured out, having to do with the Euphrates River being dried up and the gathering of Armageddon. So that's actually close to seven years from now. So even if Donald Trump were re-elected in 2020 and he fulfilled a second term, that would end in January of 2025. So no, if Donald Trump has two uh, consecutive terms in office, even if he does, what we call Armageddon, what the Bible refers to as Armageddon, the gathering of Armageddon, will not happen during the Trump presidency. Now that being said, I want to comment just briefly here that I do believe that Donald Trump is apocalyptic. I've written before that there are 20 reasons that he was apocalyptic, and I, did, I wrote this before he became in office. Uh, partially because God has a 6,000 year plan uh, that the 6,000 years is almost up and the time of Donald Trump's presidency aligns with that but also there's other prophecies about the end times for example Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 6 to 8 uh, it refers to a highly indebted nation uh, we know this has got to do with the time of the end if you read the first few verses of Habakkuk 2 as far as debt goes the United States is the most indebted nation in the history of humanity and under Donald Trump's presidency, the debt has increased. Now, lest I sound like I'm just blaming Donald Trump, U.S. President Barack Obama nearly doubled the U.S. debt during the time he was in office, uh, but Donald Trump has con continued the process. Now, Barack Obama encouraged the Europeans to build their military while he was around and spend more on the military, but since Donald Trump became president, his actions, statements, and insults, if you will, have convinced the Europeans that they don't really want to rely on the United States and that they do want to become their own empire and they want to build their own military. And this particular prince who becomes the king of the north, by the way, is European. And in Daniel 11.39, I'm not going to read this now, it says he will end up attacking and taking over the United States. So in those particular respects, uh, U.S. President Trump is apocalyptic. Now, furthermore, I was talking about the deal in Daniel 9, uh, 26, 27. There's a type of a peace deal. U.S. President Donald Trump, similar to US President, former U.S. President Barack Obama and other world leaders, has encouraged the situation which could put in some type of a peace deal. Donald Trump has proposed his own deal. Uh, he has indicated he thinks he's going to get it through. Uh, we'll see. But a deal will come. And so Donald Trump has been working toward that. Other world leaders have been working toward it. So while I do feel that Donald Trump is apocalyptic, and he's taken many steps that help push the world toward the start of the Great Tribulation, etc., to the day of the Lord, which will lead to Armageddon, no, if Donald Trump has two consecutive terms in office, Armageddon will not happen during his time in office. I realize he could lose in 2020 and get reelected in 2024, but we'll skip that. That's, for, at this sense, a fairly remote thing. So to answer the question, is the author correct that the time of Armageddon will not happen during the first or even a, a, a second consecutive Trump presidency? Correct. 
Battle of Armageddon, or the, the gathering of Armageddon, the battle takes actually place in another location, but the gathering of Armageddon will not take place in the Donald Trump presidency. It cannot take place before 2025 when you add three and a half years from the time the peace deal is supposed to be confirmed and the other three plus years from the start of the Great Tribulation to the pouring of the sixth bowl of the, of the seventh seal in Revelation. You're talking absolute earliest 2025 and I think that's, that's much too early. I think uh, the earliest we could see uh, Armageddon, if you will, is, is 2026. And it's not based on the fact that the Russians and Chinese and the Americans don't want to get into some battle right now. It's based upon what the Bible says is going to happen. And what the Bible says is going to happen. So as far as Armageddon goes, uh, you can rest assured the next several years it's not going, going to happen because of what this book says. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.